Welcome to our Fit Money Flip lesson on inflation and saving versus investing. In today's lesson, we're going to work to understand how inflation works. We're going to differentiate between saving and investing, and we'll try to understand the concept of risk versus return in terms of saving and investment products. First, think this over. Have you ever heard somebody say, back in my day, milk used to cost only 50 cents a gallon? What is a product you've heard someone reminisce like that about? How much did it cost before and how much would it cost now? The question we want to answer today is why does the price of products like this rise? Inflation is the reason that products prices rise over time. If you look here at this table, you'll see that the cost of living in the United States has changed dramatically in the past 40 years. So for instance, a new house might have that cost $48,000 in 1975 today would cost $209,000, right? Take a look at the table in the lower left-hand corner. Let's say you had a new house that in 1975 cost you $48,000. That same house today or in 2015 would have cost you $270,000. That's because the purchasing power of money changes over time as a result of inflation. We're going to watch a quick video that explains this. In the video, listen for these vocabulary words. Purchasing power, or how much you can buy for each dollar you have. What a monetary phenomenon is, something that happens with money across an economy. A central bank, like the U.S. Central Bank that sets interest rates and makes other decisions for the whole country. And assets, which in this case are things that belong to you or that you can purchase. If you want to watch this video on your own computer, you'll find the link on your handout. Inflation is the increase in prices of goods or services over time. Dan just got paid and needs to buy groceries. Dan heads to the grocery store and loads up his cart with the items that he needs. These items cost Dan a total of $100. A year later, Dan returns to the grocery store with $100 to purchase the same items. However, now the same items cost $105 and Dan is forced to remove an item from his cart. Dan has experienced the effects of a 5% inflation rate. Dan must pay $5 extra to purchase the same items that cost $100 only a year ago. Inflation leads to higher prices and lower purchasing power. It's usually a monetary phenomenon caused by a country printing more money than is justified by the country's wealth. When more dollars are issued for a limited amount of assets, the value of each dollar is decreased. Many countries' central banks set an inflation rate target of 2 to 3% per year. If you're interested in learning more about inflation, try going to the usinflationcalculator.com and inputting your year of birth along with the sample price of something. See how the change of it might have, might have changed in value over time. Now, on your worksheet, you should answer these two questions. First, what is inflation in your own words? Watch the video again if you need to. What effect does inflation have on your money or purchasing power? Pause this video now and answer these two questions. When you're done, come back and play. Now that you're back, we're gonna move on to make the distinction between saving and investing. This relates to inflation because you want to make sure that you are investing or getting some return on your savings so that if you put ten dollars in the bank today it still gives you ten dollars of purchasing power many years from now when you use it let's watch this video to distinguish between saving and investing Every successful investor must begin by understanding the difference between saving, investing, and speculating. If you get those confused, you run the risk of losing a lot of money. Let's start with saving. Saving can be defined as the process of setting money aside in order to make a purchase a short time in the future, typically under three years. 
The most important element when it comes to saving is the safety of your money. You don't want the value of your savings to fluctuate because you'll need all of it to make your purchase. There are several options available to help you save money – savings accounts, money market accounts, and certificates of deposit, for example. Unfortunately, as a trade-off for protecting your money, saving typically pays interest at a rate that is just a bit higher than inflation. If you want to earn more than that, you'll have to look to investing. Unlike saving, investing is a long-term process. It often involves committing a portion of your money to owning a share of a business, with the expectation that you'll receive a higher return than inflation. The most important factor in investing is the growth of your money, and there are many ways to invest, with stocks, bonds, and real estate being the most popular. However, once again, there's a trade-off. While investing typically offers better returns than saving, it also carries more risk, as the value of your investment bounces up and down, at least when looked at in the short term. To be a successful investor, you must invest your money for at least three years. That's because, over longer periods, the value of your money will appreciate enough so that even if the value of your investment falls over a short period of time, it will still be higher at the end of the period than it would have been if your money had been sitting in a savings account. But what if you need to grow your money quickly? That's where speculating comes in. Speculating involves putting your money at risk with the hope that you will earn a high return in a short period of time. There, because speculating isn't something that you all need to engage in. Take out your handout again, and once again, answer a couple questions for us. First, what's the purpose of saving? Feel free to rewatch this video if it's helpful. Second, what's the purpose of investing? Again, if you want to think about that, again, watch the video. What's the difference between saving and investing as compared with inflation? And what's the difference between saving and investing in terms of risk and return? All of these concepts are addressed in the video we just played. Pause this slide now and come back when you've answered these questions, or rewind and watch the saving and investing video here again. Now that you've been able to answer these questions, let's move on to talk about different types of savings products. Again, if you're saving, you're just trying to put money away and keep the same amount of purchasing power over a long period of time. First, on your handout, you should read about each of these three types of savings accounts. Commercial savings accounts at a big bank that you might see ads for on TV, a money market account, which could be run by any type of bank, or an online savings account. Again, many commercial banks or small credit unions or banks of all shapes offer online savings accounts, but these are all three options to understand. Once you've read the savings options, go ahead and read one scenario below the savings options. Figure out, based on what you now know about savings options, which savings account is best for this scenario. There really isn't a wrong answer here. You just have to be able to justify your choice about using, say, a commercial savings account for putting a down payment on your car in a year. You just need to back it up with what we've learned about inflation or in other places about compound interest and other elements. Pause this video until you've read all three savings options and figured out the right, op the right savings option for one or three of these scenarios. Now, let's talk a little bit about risks and returns. Think about places in your life where you might take risks. Most of the time, risks can be things that could end up badly, but they also may think be things that you try even though it could turn out badly because there's some return or reward. We can think about it two ways. <clears throat> Risk, in the case of investing, is the danger of losing some or all of your money. Remember the graph from the video where the value of his money went up and down in a zigzag? Return is the reward of additional money in the term of interest or dividends. So if his money started at the bottom of the graph and ended much higher up in value, the difference between those two would be the return. Generally, when we're investing, the greater the risk, the greater the potential return. By the same token, the lower the risk, the smaller the potential return. Now you might say, why don't we always go for something with bigger returns? 
The fact is, if you go for something that's high risk, your options are big returns or sometimes a total loss of your money. That's why we call it risk. On the pyramid of investments, risk and return have a converse relationship. So the greater the risk, the lower the return. Let's talk about where different savings options might show up on this pyramid and feel free to add these products to the pyramid on your handout. At the bottom of the pyramid with the lowest amount of risk, meaning your money is pretty much 100% sure to be there when you want to take it out, but you're also going to get very little return on your money, are things like pocket cash, let's say you keep it in your wallet or under your mattress, a commercial savings account, a money market account, an online savings account, or a certificate of deposit. A certificate of deposit, a certificate of deposit, otherwise known as a CD, is a savings account that entitles the owner to receive a little bit more interest, but you have to leave your money in the bank for a fixed period of time, one, three, five, or some other number of years. You can't access that money in the interim without paying penalties. So again, for all of these, the risk is low. You're pretty much guaranteed to get your money back, but your return is also low. You're not going to get very much extra money by keeping your money there. At the second level of the pyramid are government bonds. A bond is issued by a US agency and it's a loan you give to the government. The government agrees to pay it back at a certain date and pay some interest at a fixed rate along the way. Usually these interest rates are low depending on the time and the economy, they, but they are backed by the government. And so you're generally fairly low risk of losing your money. At the third level of the pyramid, we've got mutual funds, corporate bonds, and even stocks. These are all ways of buying small pieces of companies. You've got the chance of a much better return by buying a small piece of a company. But if the company doesn't do well, you've also got a lot of risk of losing your money. Let's say the company goes out of business, you could lose your money entirely. At the top level with the highest amount of risk and the lead and the potentially the highest amount of return are collectibles or commodities. These are items like commodities or things like copper or coffee or oil, raw materials or agricultural products. Collectibles are things that you might collect, like, let's say, baseball cards. They're high risk because you never know what the value of them is going to be over time. Consider the Beanie ba Baby bust of the 90s if you'd like to do some reading on this. But you may end up with a great amount of return as items can end up being much more worth that what they worth much more what they were originally. So to sum up, think about what the difference is between saving and investing. In this case, we want you to think of investing as putting money into a product with the expectation of a return. Now, what you can expect from that return goes to what kind of risks you're willing to take on. Saving is putting money aside for safekeeping. We don't want to take much risk with this money at all. Now let's think about what the relationship is between risk and return. To summarize here, when you're investing, Generally, the higher risk a product is, the higher the potential return. But remember, that comes at great risk of not having your money there when you decide you want it. For more information on this and other lessons, please visit fitmoney.org.